And hello and welcome to another episode of the Infobots podcast. This is episode number 19, and I am your host, author Frederick Fishman, and today and every day we are sponsored by me. So for links to all my books, apparel, and gear, go to my main Infobots website at infobots, that's spelled with two T's at the end, infobots.com. You can also help us out and show your support by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash infobots podcast. Okay, let's get going. Well, yesterday we talked about why it is hot and cold at different times of the year. Well, today we want to pose the question, well, why does it rain? It's a bit complicated, so bear with me. Clouds are made of water droplets. Within a cloud, water droplets condense onto one another, causing the droplets to grow. When these water droplets get too heavy to stay suspended in the cloud, they fall to earth as rain. Well, what about snow, hail, and sleet? Well, all of these forms of water don't fall out of a clear blue sky, of course. You need clouds. So then let's go back to the basics. What are clouds and what makes them? Well, clouds form from water or ice that's been evaporated from the Earth's surface or from plants that give off water and oxygen as a product of photosynthesis. When it evaporates, that is, when it rises from the Earth's surface onto the atmosphere, water is in the form of a gas, water vapor. Water vapor then turns into clouds when it cools and condenses. That is, it turns back into liquid water or ice. In order to condense, the water vapor must have a solid something to glom onto. This solid seed may be a speck of dust or pollen or a drop of water or crystal of ice. Dew is a water vapor that has condensed back onto Earth's surface, on grass or a car's windshield, for example. Are you still with me, by the way? <laughs> okay, hang in there, we're getting there. In the cloud, with more water condensing onto other water droplets, the droplets grow. When they get too heavy to stay suspended in the cloud, even with updrafts within the cloud, they fall to Earth is rain. If the air in the cloud is below the freezing point or 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero centigrade, ice crystals form. If the air all the way down to the ground is also freezing or below that freezing point, you get snow. However, if the layers of atmosphere within the cloud and between the cloud and the ground alternate between warmer than freezing and colder than freezing, you get all other types of precipitation, like ice or hail. For example, if a snowflake falls through a warmer part of the cloud, it can get coated with water, then frozen again as it's tossed back into a colder part of the air. It can go round and round, adding more and more layers of a new ice. When it's too heavy to stay up, what finally comes down is hail. If the updrafts in a thundercloud are strong enough, the hailstones can get pretty big before they become too heavy to stay up. Hailstones can range from pea size to golf ball size and even higher. A new record for the largest hailstone ever was set in 2010. It fell on July the 23rd in Vivian, South Dakota, it was 8 inches in diameter, 18.62 inches in circumference. It weighed 1.93 pounds. That could put a real dent in your day and your car. Hail can cause a lot of damage to buildings, cars, and especially to crops. However, freezing rain can be even worse. Freezing rain occurs when conditions are just right. Falling snow encounters first a layer of warmer air 
which melts the snowflakes, and then, just above the surface of the earth, a very cold layer, which makes the liquid water supercooled, ready to freeze upon the slightest hint of encouragement. Now, when the supercooled rain hits colder than freezing ground, objects near the ground, such as roads, trees, and power lines, those snap when hit by that freezing rain. Just like that, the about to freeze rain turns to ice. Ice coats everything with a thin, sometimes transparent, frozen film. As more rain falls, the coating becomes thicker. The ice can become so thick and heavy that tree limbs snap and fall across power lines or the power lines themselves just sag and sag until they snap. Okay, did I wear you out? Thank you for listening. We hope you will support our efforts to bring you yet another InfoBots podcast. So please join us for that. And don't forget, you can help us out by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash InfoBots podcast. Thank you very much again. Join us again for another episode of InfoBots.